Okay, so now we're going to discuss the idea of x plus x versus 2x in terms of random variables and their algebra. Reconsider this game that we talked about in an earlier video. It, here's our probability distribution table. We know the expected value is 10, standard deviation is 18.0, and the variance is 325. And I want to consider what's the difference between x plus x and 2x. Well, what x plus x means, I play the game twice. Versus 2x means I double my point scores. So 2x simply means I take all these scores and I make them times 2, times 2, and times 2, and it keeps the same probabilities attached to them. And so here are my outcomes. I've doubled the point value. Whereas x plus x means that I have played the game twice. So if I think about that, and humor me here, I'm going to go through and make a tree diagram and assign probabilities to it. I know here is my probability of getting a 0 is 1 half. But from 0, if I play again, I could get 0, I could get 5, or I could get 50. And it has the probability of a half, one third, one sixth. If this is my total score, well, my total points is 0, 5, and 50. Easy enough. But if my first roll I got a 5, well then, and that happens a third of the time, I could get 0 my second time I play, a 0, or a 5, or a 50. So my point total will be 5, 10, or 55. So already you can see that my outcomes are there's lots more than there was if I just double it with 2x. And similarly, if I have 50 points to start, which is a probability of 1 sixth, I have 0, I have 5, and I have 50 that could come out. So I could have a score of 0, 55, or 100. Each of these branches of a tree have a probability attached. So it could be 1 third times 1 half. So the probability of getting this branch of the 5 is going to be one sixth. The probability of this branch will be one ninth. And so these probabilities stay the same as associated with 0, 10, and 100, whereas these ones are going to be different. I'm going to go one step further and let's actually calculate the mean and the standard deviation. I've taken the liberty of putting it into my calculator already as L3 and L4. And these L4 shows the probabilities. I've multiplied them out via the tree diagram. And when I do this computation, I'm going to change it to L3 and L4. That's where I put them in. Let's see what I see here. Okay, so I get a mean of 20, and the standard deviation is 25.49. But if I take that value, and let's see if I go 5, I'm going to take that standard deviation, and I'm going to square it to find the variance. I know the variance now, the variance of, of x plus x is 650, which is double that value. And so even though I've played it twice, I've doubled the variance, the standard deviation, you can't really see. So I'm, in terms of working with standard deviation, I shift the variance and then I add them. When I look at the expected value, well, it was quite simple. I expected to get twice as many points. Okay, that was when I added the two random variables together. But let's do something similar. Okay, imagine I play the game twice and my score is the difference between the first and second game. Okay. Um, it's not the same, same situation as playing it twice as much, okay? So I'm going to look at my first game minus my second game. And again, when I look at those possibilities, I'm going to get, I could get a zero, and from zero I could get zero, five, or fifty, second time. So if I subtract them, I get zero, 
negative 5 or negative 50 as my to point, point total. And this is equal to my random variable d. If I get 5 points, well, I could get 0, 0, 5, and 50. If I subtract them, I get 5, 0, 5, and a negative 45. Similarly, if I do the next scenario, if I start off with 50 points, I could get 0, 5, and 50 in my game, which then is going to be 50, positive 45, and 0. So here are all my different outcomes for my game. Again, they have the probabilities attached to them. So if I use my calculator, I'm going to find the mean and the variance of D. I'll go to my stat, I'll put my values in, and as opposed, this will be 0. The next one's going to be, I'm going to change it to minus 5 and minus 50. Oh, let me try that again. So 0, minus 5, minus 50. And now when I made this table to begin with, I was careful with how I did it so that I would be able to be able to just change these values. Negative 45 and 0. When I do the calculations again now, these are the values that I get. I can see, if I look at those, here are my values. My expected value is 0, so I did actually subtract these two, but my st standard deviation is the same as it was before. So let me just make sure, let's look at the variance. I'm going to go 4, let's square it, indeed is 650 as it was before is the variance of D. And so even though I subtracted my random variables, the variance got larger. It was 325 for X. Now, that's a really important idea that even though I subtract them, they actually get larger. It's the same as if I added the variances. So that's really important. So if I look at C part, I'm going to clear off this part here. If I look at C part, if I played three times and my score was a total points, what would I expect in the variance to be? Well, that's now saying if I play three times, so that's x plus x plus x, three games. Well, based upon that, I would think the expected value of x plus x plus x will be the expected value of each of them individually. If I remember back from the original game, the expected value was 10. And I'll take this little table here along with me to the next page. Put it up. Okay. And so then it's going to be equal to equal to 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is going to be 30. Which makes sense to me. If I each time I expect to get 10 points, I would think I am going to get 30. But if I do the variance of x plus x plus x. Well, that's going to be the variance of x plus the variance of x plus the variance of x, which will be 3 variance uh, times 325, which is 975 is the variance. All right, so, and that's finally, so if I'm going to do it n times, well, if there were n of these, this will be, if I had, if I adapt this scenario to n, well, this will be plus all the way up to n, well, then it's going to be plus all the way up to n, oh, and so in this formula here will be 10, it would be n 
times 10. And if this one went all the way up to the variance of n of these scenarios, it would then be n times the variance of x. Okay? So I add them all together. How about if in the first game, so d part now. The first game, the points are doubled. Second game, tripled. And then I add five points just for extra fun. Well, if that is the scenario, what happens there then is let's make my new random variable. It's good. My first game, I double the points. My second game, I'm going to triple the points and then add five. Now, this does not become 5x because this just means I've played two different games. And so if I'm going to find the expected value of 2x plus 3x plus 5, using the algebra of random variables, this is going to be 2 times the expected value of x plus 3 times the expected value of x plus 5. So it's 2 times 10 plus 3 times 10, because expected value is 10, plus 5, which is 55. The expectation is easy. The variance, though, is a little bit more tricky, because the variance of 2x plus 3x plus 5, well, this becomes the variance of 2x plus the variance of 3x. The 5 vanishes because it's just a shift in the number. It does not change the spread. When I do this, it is now 2 squared, the variance of x. Because if you remember back to this scenario, it's b squared plus 3 squared the variance of x. So it's 4 plus 9 is 13 times the variance, and the variance was 325, which will be whatever that value is. So we have to treat the variance a little bit differently. So to summarize, expect expectation becomes expectation of x plus or minus the expectation of y. But the variance comes the variance of x. If I add or subtract, it always becomes adding the variance of y. This is so key. It's always adding no matter what. For expectation of this scenario of expectation, well, it becomes a expected value of x plus or minus b expected value of y plus c. The expectation is intuitively just like regular algebra. And then finally, the variance, again, this is the one that's the hardest, I think. The variance then becomes the variance of a x plus plus, and that is important, it's just plus, you write it so we can see it well. It is just plus the variance of by, and the c vanishes, which is then simply the a gets squared plus the b gets squared. Okay, these are important scenarios. And if you look in your formula booklet, and if you go to the option, you can see here that this is talking about it is adding. See how it is adding even though it was plus or minus. It doesn't show the, the shift of the values, but it shows how to deal with the squares and the adding.